study. Um, I promise I won't uh, uh, go over the speed limit, but I won't overtake your time. So my job today is to convince you of the importance of mathematics, both useful and useless. Um, okay, so if you uh, allow for some, if you, if you forgive me for some self-promotion, uh, I have been telling mathematical stories for uh, over a decade. The most famous is the one, the bug on the ID card on the, the, which we have in Portugal. Uh, well, perhaps most of the people know, but about uh, 20 years ago or so, uh, an extra digit in the ID card appeared, a strange extra digit, and the most, uh, the, the strangest urban stories about this extra digit uh, were, cir were in circulation. So the most us usual was that, and I ask you to raise your hand if you heard it, that it was a number of people with the same name as yourself. Who, who heard that? Yes, okay. Well, very good. Of course it's not. Uh, it's, uh, it's just what we call, a, it's a, a check digit, which, uh, I'm sorry, which ensures that uh, the, the rest of the algorithm, of the, of the, the number is well written. Problem is, as I, have, as I have shown, this has a bug. So it doesn't work. In the, in the cover of my book, uh, if your, your, your number is a zero, you have a 50% probability of it doesn't work, that it doesn't work. So in the cover of my book, of this book, you have a, a real zero and a fake zero. So you, and you can't tell what, which is which. So uh, if you're wondering why you were never asked, never, probably, never, I have never been asked, uh, the extra number in my, in my ID card, this is the reason, it doesn't work. Because the mathematics is wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I have been telling other mathematical stories. And just to finish this stuff, and uh, maybe you're wondering, oh, well, okay, now we have a citizen card, which is great, has everything on it. Who has this one? Yeah, great. So maybe you notice that uh, after the, this spurious extra digits, now there's something else going on. You have two letters and one digit, at an, extra, an extra code. And maybe you think, okay, now there is no bug. The bad news is there is a second bug. <laughs> uh, I have been uh, known this for a couple of weeks. Uh, I have known this for a couple of weeks. There's a second bug. So it's really, really sad. Why don't they hire a mathematician? I would gladly do it. Uh, okay, so, um, uh, I'll skip this in order to go under the speed limit uh, and stick to two questions in mathematics and then discuss the question of usefulness versus unuseful, uh, useless mathematics. Okay, so the first example is cryptography. Cryptography is the, the, the art or the science of transmitting secrets. And this is one of the most important things we can do between in communicating. It is important in, it is very important in love and in war. For instance, uh, in war, and when I, when I say in war, it is really in war. This is, this is well, you know, Julius Caesar. Uh, Caesar invented uh, to communicate with his, with his troops uh, in campaign. He invented what is called today the Caesar cipher. Instead of sen sending a, a, a text which anyone could read, uh, so the enemy could read if, he, if they caught the, 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 the soldier carrying the message, he invented the Caesar cipher, which is basically taking the alphabet and ordering the letter and then substituting the letter for the, the letter plus three, so to speak. So A goes to D, oh, I'm sorry, A goes to D, uh, B goes to E, etc. You can have, for, you can have it very easily implemented here. You have two wheels, two spinning wheels, two alphabets, uh, and then you can encode a message like this. A goes to T and the receiver has these also two wheels, he knows that, that when he reads a T, he really sh it, it really should be A. And then you send a text which is garbled, uh, but uh, since the enemy doesn't know this, then you're safe. Okay, this is very, very, uh, time left, zero minutes. <laughs> okay. This is very, very uh, dangerous, of course, because you see, Caesar is here. And it has, I don't know, 100 legions down here. If, and all the people, either the emitter or the receivers, have to have this decipher, 
upon me, ciphering, deciphering keys, these things. So if one, if one of the 100 legions stationed in Gallia has his uh, deciphering key uh, discovered, his, uh, all the other 99 will be compromised. So all the communications will be deciphered. So this is really, really very dangerous. Uh, I should say that, uh, <laughs> uh, in fact, when I mentioned love, love and war, it was, it's really love. I mean, uh, the, the organization probably wouldn't allow me to have these images here, but the first occurrence of this kind of cipher is in the Kama Sutra. Uh, it, is it is called the Kama Sutra cipher because, and it's a variation of the Caesar cipher, more sophisticated than this, I should say, because love is more important than war. Um, because the, the ladies were supposed to communicate with other people for some secret purposes, secretly. And so this is called the Kama Sutra cipher. You can go check it in the internet, just, just to make sure that, I just didn't have the pictures there. But the same problem exists. So if somebody intercepts, if, the, the, some, if somebody gets hold of the de deciphering key, I mean, both the emitter and the receiver must have the same key. And if, so if, if a third party gets the key from the receiver or from one of the potential receivers, then the secret is out. It was exactly this which, which lasted for more than 2,000 years. Uh, and uh, is exactly this which happened in the Second World War with uh, the Enigma machine in, uh, in, in, in na with Nazi Germany. So when, when uh, Nazi Germany invaded Poland, uh, some Polish people uh, captured two Enigma machines and fled to England. And in England, this, the, the Enigma machine was very complicated, but basically was a very complicated version of this. And so it took some years for mathematicians to decode, well, some months, for mathematicians to decode the Enigma machine, but they eventually did. And so the secrets of the Enigma machine, the German communications, were secretly known to the enemy because they used this kind of cipher. So, so the, the, the receiver, uh, one of the copies of the, the, the decoding, the encoding, de decoding device, which was this typewriter instead of this wheel, was received, was captured, and then the security was compromised, of course. Well, and so matters stood for over 2,000 years until in 1978, a miracle occurred. Somebody, which I will speak about in a moment, had a wonderful idea, a wonderfully new idea, which is the idea which allows us today to have secure communications on the internet. When you see a yellow padlock on your browser, or when you do home banking, or, or secure com communications or transactions in your computer, this is what's going on. And this is a whole new concept of cryptography called public key cri cryptography. So suppose Alice, Alice is a common name in a Alice and Bob are uh, the A and B. Uh, Alice is the, the, the receiver. Uh, Alice, Alice is Amazon. Suppose you, want to, you are Bob and we want to, to buy a book from Amazon. So what does Amazon Alice do? She puts a green public key all over the world, all over the internet, and she holds back a second private key, red one, just to herself, she doesn't transmit it to anyone. So instead of the, 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 the Roman generals or the German troops, only Amazon has the, the red key. Now, the fact is that wh what's, what's the strategy? The strategy is the green key is the public key. Everybody uh, can use it, but it only serves to lock the messages. It only encrypts. So here Bob is saying, hello Alice, and encrypt and you get this, oops, you get this garbled text. Uh, you get this garbled text. B and if somebody else Judge, gets this don't text. Don't get carried away because I mean, if the time is showing on your screen, we still have 10 minutes, okay? 10 minutes. I'll okay. clock you from here. 10 minutes, okay, thank okay. you very much. Uh, so if somebody else gets this, this thing, uh, he doesn't know what to do with it because he doesn't know how to decrypt it. To decrypt it, you need, I mean, the red key is the only one which can unlock and decipher the message. And Alice hasn't transmitted the, the key to anyone. Only she has the key. So the, even if the, the, uh, the, there is no, no, no key, nobody else has the key. So it ca cannot be intercepted. 
that's why you can do tr secure transactions on the internet. This is called public key cryptography, because even though you don't know, you don't notice it. Uh, Amazon puts its public key, its green key, everywhere, and your home bank or your bank, whatever the key is there. But only the Amazon has the the green, the red key, the private key, which decrypts or uh, your credit card company or whatever. Uh, of course, you don't even notice this. Why not? Well, for the same reason that you don't notice that that cars move because they have an engine. I mean, the engine is is uh, is hidden. You you don't notice. You don't even notice this. Amazon does not have a warning flash flashing saying, hey, "Here goes my private key." No, it just says you you just see a yellow padlock saying that the transmission is secure. Why? Because of this. And what is going on here? Uh, what is going on here is deep mathematics. This mathematics was discovered by, you can see, tell that these guys are mathematicians. Only a mathematician is standing in front of a blackboard using a t-shirt and a long beard and this kind of stuff. And these, these were three mathematicians, are three mathematicians, Rivas, Shamir, and Adelman. Uh, they are now multimillionaires because they own this company uh, called RSA Security, which ensures secure communications. Uh, and they posted the following, and um, their process of uh, decryption is based on mathematics, in, namely in forming huge, enormously huge prime numbers, or products of prime numbers, products of enormous prime numbers. So they had, in 1978, they published a public challenge, uh, which is called RSA 129, RSA is the number of the guys, 129 is the length of the prime, so you have a prime with 129 uh, digits. Uh, and they, they, they published the ciphertext. The ciphertext is a garbled uh, string of characters. And for a very long time, nobody could figure out what, what the text was. So it, uh, it was deciphered only in 1994, and it was this, it was a complete nonsense. Uh, which is the magic word that we miss, ossify. Th this is an ossify, it's kind of old. So it's meaningless, but that's not the point. Nowadays, we use exactly the same thing, with only with prime numbers with th which are thousands of digits long. But the, the, the process is the, is the same. Okay, so now I'd like to turn to Harley, which uh, is one of the <coughs> great mathematicians of the uh, well, the English mathematicians of the 20th century, who worked in prime number theory, and I have a, a side a quotation there, but he um, he once uh, in the 20s he once was uh, having dinner at a high table in Cambridge with Rutherford, who was the discoverer of the nu atomic nucleus, and he said, "Well, Ernest, Ernest Rutherford, we are lucky guys. We are the only two at this table who have never done anything useful." Well, Rutherford discovered the nucleus, and 20 years later, we had a nuclear bomb. Uh, Hardy worked on primes, and nowadays we have secure communications. We couldn't have home banking, for instance, or secure communications without primes, without large primes. So, but he, has, he says that in 1940 that his mathematics is totally useless. Okay, uh, Google. Five, five minutes, sorry. Five minutes. Okay, I, I will do it in five minutes then. Why is Google so better than Nokia? Because Google is mathematics, deep mathematics. And <laughs> here it is. <laughs> Google, I, I used to, to, to work with a search engine call, called AltaVista. And then at some stage, the, but th these were two guys which are do were doing hi their PhD in Stanford. Uh, and uh, this paper is in the internet, you can look at it. And they discovered a great algorithm for doing web, web search instead of brute force, which was what uh, uh, search engines did at, at that time, out of this, for instance. And they published their paper. And then they decided, wait, this is a great idea. Let's make a startup company. And they dropped their PhD. I don't, I don't know if they, they finished their PhD. It's irrelevant because now they're worth 170,000 uh, billion dollars. Isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. 70 billion. Yeah. Okay, so this is the advantage of doing good mathematics. You've seen this picture before. How do they do it? I won't try to explain it, but they take advantage. They construct something called the Google matrix, which is 
I mean, you can think of one of each one of these small stars uh, as a page in the internet. What uh, Google does is that it, it, gives, it gives importance to a page. No, not because it is a, a big page, but by the number of times it is referred to, a number of incoming links. Okay, so if you refer to a page, several, why, that is why uh, Wikipedia is almost always the first choice. Uh, it's because the Google mat matrix is constructed in this fashion. Okay, so in the Google matrix, the now, now called Google matrix is a subject of mathematical investigation, research right now. Okay, so how many minutes? Two? Two minutes, okay. So I'll very briefly try to tell you what, what, what if the finance minister tomorrow tells you that, okay, so mathematics, uh, some mathematics is, u is useless, let's get rid. So you see there are some small islands of useful mathematics, small, uh, small islands of uh, useless mathematics, and maybe potentially useful mathematics in the middle. So we need to cut, to, to cut losses, so let's cut, let's just stick to the useful mathematics. So this is probably the image of mathematics in, uh, in the, the finance minister's head. So what really happens is that maths, like the internet, is highly connected. So uh, a, subject, a subject in mathematics, I may be working on this, which is connected to this, and this, and this, and this, and it's, it's a very int intricate uh, story. So, and what really, ha what really happens is this. I mean, the islands you had, I, if, you, if you just uh, stick to the useful, uh, to the, which were, let me see, uh, uh, this one and this one, to the useful area, and you cut off all the rest, you are cutting off all these links, all these links, and then you are losing a lot of uh, potentially useful things. I mean, useless now, but potentially useful in the near future. When Hardy, uh, in 1940, Hardy thought that prime numbers were totally useful, useless. Now, we have home banking because of prime numbers. I mean, research in prime numbers. So who is to tell what mathematics will be important in, say, 50 years' time or 100 years' time? No one. Uh, let me finish by quoting a famous mathematician, the Russian mathematician Ar Arnold, which died last year, which says that there are two types of mathematics, those which are useful and those which have not yet been applied. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.